Okay, in this video we're talking about the behaviors of gases and there's two laws that we're going to look at um, that kind of describe these behaviors. So that's Boyle's Law and Charles' Law. So first let's look at Boyle's Law here. Or actually first let's talk about the um, factors that affect gas. And we've kind of talked about these in classes already. Um, there's four different factors that affect um, the behaviors of gases, and those are temperature, volume, number of particles, and pressure. Um, and so let's look at Boyle's law here and talk about those four, um, those four factors here. So Boyle's law, it states that the volume of a gas is inversely proportional to its pressure if the temperature and number of particles are constant. So there's some things that we have to look at here. Um, First of all, let's skip to the second half of it. If it says if temperature and number of particles are held are constant. So that means if these two do not change, then the relationship between volume and pressure is an inverse relationship or inversely proportional. So what does that mean? That means if volume goes up, what happens to pressure? It goes down. Um, and the opposite is true also. If volume goes down, then pressure goes up. And so if we look at this, if we look at a container and we could see those molecules, um, if we have a lid here at the top, um, you can see as, as we decrease pressure here, so if we push down on that lid, I mean, if we decrease the volume, then pressure is going to go up, right? Because we're pressing and we're compressing all these little molecules in a, to a smaller space, so they're going to be colliding more, um, and they're going to be creating more pressure inside of um, the bottle. So let's look at Charles' Law now. So Charles' Law, um, well, Boyle's Law, we talked about volume, the relationship between volume and pressure. Charles' Law, we're talking about the um, relationship between volume and temperature in this case. So again, let's look at this definition here, it, says, it states that the volume of a gas is directly proportional to its temperature if the pressure and number, uh, as long as the pressure and number of particles of the gas are constant. So again, number of particles, and in this case pressure, have to be held constant, so those don't change, um, then that means that the volume and temperature are going to have a direct relationship or they're going to be directly proportional. So if volume goes up, then temperature goes up. Uh, and then you could do it the opposite. If, if temperature goes down, then volume goes down. Okay, so if we look at um, the example here of a car tire, um, you guys may notice whenever you start driving, um, during the winter time it's a little bit colder and your tires may look a little flat, so kind of like this picture here. Um, during the summertime, um, it heats up again, and your, your tires may look um, normal again. Um, so, one of the, so you can see how temperature, it, remember if temperature goes down, then volume of the gas goes down. So the, those particles are going to become closer, there's going to be less pressure in your tire, it's going to look a little flat. During the summertime, it heats up, so those particles spread out, creates more pressure. So in the wintertime, Sometimes you have to actually add more particles of gas or more molecules of air into your tire during the winter, and that's because those, those particles kind of get closer and contract and don't have enough pressure on your tire. So sometimes you actually have to add air into your tire to air them up. Um, so we're going to kind of look at that real quick and just look at all these four different factors that we talked about um, that we did in class. So. Uh, one of the things is number of particles. So obviously we got to start with um, a certain number of particles. So if we pump air into this container, we have particles bouncing around everywhere. Um, and so number of particles, how does that affect pressure? So let's look and see how these things affect everything. Um, the more particles we add, you can see pressure is going to increase. So number of particles, um, the more you add, the more pressure you're going to have, and also the higher the temperature is going to go. Um, so if you notice that, because these particles are colliding with each other, the more you have, the more um, friction between these, the greater the, the temperature. 
And if you know what temperature is, basically temperature is just a measurement. Really what you're measuring is how much kinetic energy um, those particles have or how much they're moving around. Um, volume, we can change volume here. So if we decrease volume, let's see what that does to pressure and temperature. So they're closer together. They're going to be bouncing off of each other more. So we have an increase in temperature. We have an increase in pressure. So if we decrease volume, um, pressure is going to go up. And so if we, if we look at Boyle's Law with volume and pressure, you can see that relationship right here. Um, let's pull this back to where it was, and let's look at Charles Law. So if we add um, temperature, how does that affect volume? And we're talking about the volume of the gas, not necessarily the volume of the container, but if we add heat to it, then the volume will actually go up. So if we were to actually, so, so yeah, we keep that heat on it, it blows the lid because it's actually, those particles are expanding. So it's increasing its volume whenever you add heat to it. Okay, so we've kind of done that. You guys can play around with that. So you kind of got to think about those things whenever you're looking at these laws and the relationship between them. They're kind of intuitive. You just have to kind of think of examples, um, especially whenever it comes quiz time of the relationship between those. Sorry, my phone is ringing. So let's go back to... Okay, so if we look at Boyle's Law and Charles' Law and look at the equations for solving problems related to those, um, these would be the equations that you're going to need, but don't write these down yet because I want you to actually write a different equation down. Um, but if we look at Boyle's Law, it relates, um, talks about the relationship between pressure and volume. So you can see that here. We have pressure and volume on both sides. So P is pressure, V is volume. On Charles' Law, we look at the relationship between temperature and volume. And so you can see those two are in this equation. Now one of the things I want you to notice is that if we combine these two, we actually get a different equation. You can kind of see how they fit together like that. And then they actually combine to make the combined gas law equation. So this is the equation I want you guys to write down because this is we can use this equation for both solving problems related to Boyle's Law and Charles' Law. So it, we just combine those two um, and put it into one equation. And this is the one that we're going to use in class. Um, so let's look at some practice problems real quick. And let's see, the combined gas law here. So we're going to be using this equation up here to solve some of these. Um, a gas, so the first problem that I'm going to do for you guys and then the second problem you guys are going to solve. So a gas has a volume of 5 liters. First of all, let's look at volume. The units are liters, so anytime you see the big L, you know we're talking about a volume. Um, if we look at pressure, so P in the formula. Pressure, the units are going to be kPa, so kilopascal. So remember Pascal, um, we talked about that guy a little bit. He kind of gave us um, a principle that had to do with pressure, right? So that's where we got the units for. It's actually named after that Pascal guy. So kilopascals, KPA. That's for pressure. Um, so first you got to remember those two things. Um, so if we start out, it says a gas has a volume of 5 liters. So we know that is going to be our volume. Now you can think of these ones as, if it helps you, you can actually write I in there so that you can change all these ones to I, meaning initial. So this is actually our initial. Sorry. Initial um, pressure, volume, and temperature, and this would be like our final. So you can actually change these to an F. If, if it makes more sense to you to do it that way, then write it that way. So you have initial and final, what you're starting out with and then what you finish with here. So let's see. This is what we're starting out with. A gas has a volume of 5 liters at a pressure of 50 kPa. So if we um, keep going, let's skip read through this real quick. What happens to a volume when the pressure is increased to 125 kPa? The temperature does not change. So notice temperature is staying constant. 
So actually, in this case, we can just, since it's staying constant, we don't even have to worry about temperature. We can just kind of cross that out. And you see, we're back to our Boyle's Law equation with just P and V in there. So let's put five liters in for our initial volume. So that goes where V is. So we can put five in there at a pressure of 50 kPa. So we put that in for P right there. So 50, we can put a parenthesis so we know to multiply these two. Um, that is going to be equal to, so we now we have the rest of our equation, P2 um, and V2 here, or PF or VF, whichever one you want to put it as. So what happens to the volume when the pressure is increased to 100 kPa, 125 kPa? So we put that in for our final pressure. So we have 125 times um, what we're trying to find out. So what happens to the volume? So we're trying to find this last volume here. So we just leave that as V2 or VF, whichever one you want to use. So now we have the problem set up. Now we just have to solve for it. So we can take 50 times 5 and we get 250. Still going to be equal to 125 times V2. Sorry about the bell. So now we want to get V2 by itself on one side of the equal sign. So we got to move this 125 out of there. So let's divide both sides by 125. 125 divided by 125 is just 1. 1 times V2 is the same thing as just V2. Divide this by this side by 125, and we get 2. So V, so we're left with 2. And since we're trying to find volume, it's 2 liters. So our final volume is 2 liters um, in this case, and that would be our answer. All right, on this one, if you read through it, it gives you... K here, so K, so just to tell you guys, um, is temperature. That actually stands for Kelvins. So Kelvins is just another way, another uh, unit for uh, temperature. We have well, we have Celsius and Fahrenheit as well, but in this case we're using Kelvin. So K stands for temp is temperature in this case. So that's your units for temperature. Um, Pressure, still KPA, so a gas stored in a tank at 273 kelvins has a pressure of 388 uh, kPa. The safe limit for pressure is 825 kPa. At what temperature will the gas reach this pressure? So you can see if we just have uh, temperature, so this would be temperature, and we have pressure, um, then what's going to happen to volume? Even though it doesn't say it in the problem, um, just like this one up here, volume is going to stay the same. It does not change. It's held constant. So in this case, we can just get rid of our volume, and we're left with pressure and temperature in this case. So then, so you just get rid of volume, and then you're just plugging in for P and temperature. So try to solve that one. Um, answer the question, put your answer down below, and I'll see you guys in class next time.